Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today we would be discussing the problem named as sort an array of zero, ones, and twos. The problem statement is very easy to understand. We are given an array which would contain zero, ones, and twos, and we just need to sort it in the ascending order where zero would be placed at the first, and then one, and then the two itself. Okay, so now let us move to the number of elements are here at five. So if we just sort this, this would be converted to zero, zero, one, two, two. Simple enough to understand. So now we can get down to the conclusion of our first brute force approach, which is nothing but just simply sorting it. So if you use the merge sort or the quick sort algorithm, the time complexity would be big O of n log n itself. Okay. So the next one, what you can do is you can use as the numbers are quite less and it is quite feasible. So you can use a counting sort kind of algorithm. So counting sort of kind of algorithm, what do we mean by this? The counting sort of an algorithm is based on the fact like this. Yeah. So I'll just show you. So what we can do is you can simply have a counter for all this, like one, zero, and two. You can have three variables. Okay, you can use an array if the number was large, but as there are only three numbers. So let's move forward with zero, ones, and twos. Okay, or to simplify this process, you can just take an array of 0, 1 and 2 and the indexes are this and you can directly use that. Okay, you won't be needing even the for loop. Okay, like you uh, if loop. So you can directly what you can do is a of you can name it name this as the frequency table. And then you could you can you can use is you can just have this kind of structure a being the array given and you can simply have a plus plus and it would be respectively hashed out but if you are if you want more intuitive approach then move forward with an if statement where what you can do is if the number is zero so the we are at the first number the number is zero so we would increment from zero we would increment it to one itself then we have two so what we would do is we would increment the count to one then we have again one so this would be count to two and this would be have count to to itself then we have again zero so this would be counted one so now what you can do is you already know that zero would be first then one and then two so you can have the number of zeros so zero zero then we can do one and then two two and this is the sorted form that we want so now what is the time complexity of the solution the time complexity of the solution is big o of n why because you are using three variables and keep this in mind that whatever the number of variables you use the space complexity even if you are not using any auxiliary data structure just remember that if you are using some variables that would contribute constant okay to that space complexity Talking about the time complexity, what you did was you just traversed it, counted, and then again gave a new array. So that is nothing but big O of n. Okay. And big O of n, if you consider the given array, big O of 1, the space complexity, if you don't consider the given array, because we are not considering the variables and all. So we can think that, yes, this is big O of n, and we can't do better than this. But if this is not in an online judge, rather this is question is given in an interview, then the interviewer would tell you to push forward. What you would tell is, can you do better than this? So a better algorithm than this does not exist in terms of big O and time complexity, but you can do this in one traversal. Okay. So first one was this traversal, but the second one traversal you can skip that. So the next algorithm I'm telling you is not an intuitive one. Okay. Is not an intuitive one. So if you come from a background of competitive programming or if you are doing programming as of now, so don't get demotivated at this point that you didn't know this algorithm because this algorithm is the algorithm that is not very intuitive. Okay. So we call this algorithm as the Dutch national flag algorithm. Okay. So now what is this all about? Dutch national flag algorithm, we have three. Okay, we have three. That is the first one is low, the next one is high, and next one is next one is mid, and next one is high. 
So these are the three variables you would have, or you can say three flags that we have. And our main goal is to have all the zeros before low, all the ones before mid and low, and all the highs after all the twos after the high. And this range is not known. So whenever you want to remember this algorithm, please keep in mind that this figure, okay, that mid to high is not known, low and mid, you keep this figure in mind, okay. So if you keep this figure in mind, then the algorithm is very much intuitive. What we would do is, we would simply have a low and a mid at this position and then high at this position. So if you can see that everything is satisfied at this point of time, okay. Like from low to mid, nothing is there. So no one is there. From low this side, no elements are there. So zero is satisfied. High to this side, no two is there. So it is also satisfied. And mid to high is not known. So this is also satisfied. So this kind of in initialization you need to do. You need to initialize the low with mid as the zeroth point, high as the last element. So remember the way to remember it. Okay. So this is not an intuitive. So I can't focus on the intuition. But rather what I can do is I can focus on the things that would pave a way to remember this for a longer duration of time itself. So we have the low and mid. The first is that if mid is equals to zero, if mid is equals to zero, that means this value should be before low. This is what you need to do. So first we would swap the low and mid. So now mid is equals to zero. So let's just mark the indices to zero, one, two, three, and four. So see how this is getting. Okay. So when mid is equals to the value zero, see. So when mid is equals to the value zero, we would swap low and high. Okay. So we have swapped low and high because as they are at the same position, swapping I can't show you. After that, we know that the zero, we know that now low is pointing to a zeroth position, but we want low to be before zero. Okay. Zero should be before low. So what we would do is we would make low move forward. Okay. As well as the mid move forward because the low is now processed. Okay. So now we have low and mid is, so now we have again mid. So now the question arises that when mid is equal to the value two. So now what we would do is we need to focus on the high. So now this two would be swapped with that value. So this value would come here zero and this value would come here two. So now two is pointing to the high is pointing to the value two. But what we want, we want the high value to, we want the two value to be after high. So we would make high go at this position. Okay, so when we have mid is equals to two, we would swap the low, we would swap the mid, please cut this part. Okay, so when mid is equals to two, we would swap the mid and high and whatever came in high, we don't, whatever came in mid, we don't know. So we would just decrease the high high minus minus and low and high. Okay. Low and mid. This should be low and mid after that both should be plus plus after that both should be plus. plus. Now the question arises when mid is equals to one and we would see to it. Remember. So now again, low and mid is equals to the value zero. So both would move forward, swap it, both would move forward and we would come here at this point. Now the position is that we have the mid at one. What do we do? So low and high is not affected. We want mid to move forward. So just what we would do is we would make mid move forward and low would remain at its position. So when mid is equals to one, we would just make the mid move forward. Okay. At this point, we have mid is equals to two. What was it? Mid and high would be swapped. Okay. Mid and high would be swapped. So this one would be 
mid and high. So this one would be two and two. Two swapped with two, two and two swapped would have the same value. So now after that point of time, we would make high go at this position, increment it. Okay. Now low and high is at the same position. Then we would again check the mid. Now mid is equals to again two. Okay. But high is not pointing to that. So now when low is less than equal to high, we would just have it. Now at this point of time, the loop would break. Now low is not less than equal to high. So we would have a while statement to see it. See, what is the point we need to stop? The point that we need to stop is when low and high is getting mixed. Okay. We don't need to care about mid. And mid is the position that we would use to do all this. Now let us move to the implementation. So now if you observe, we are just doing one traversal and everything is done. And our focus is to remember the top strip of this and do some dry run. Okay. The implementation you don't need to remember. Okay. If you do a dry run for a simple one, if you design a test case of your own and you do a simple run, then this is absolutely very easy. Now let us move to the implementation. Okay. So what we would do is we would have low is equals to zero and then we have mid is equals to zero and then we would have high is equals to n minus one itself. Okay. And then we would simply say why mid is less than equal to high. Okay. Simple enough. Now we would have if a of a of mid is equals to equals to zero, then we would do swapping of a of mid plus plus. Okay. And then a of low plus plus the same conditions that we were having a small kind of correction that we would have mid is less than equal to high because when mid is passing the high, we know that everyone is at its same position. Like when mid has processed everyone and now high is there. So we would have it. Okay. This is a, this is an implementation where if you use this implementation, then the chances of errors are absolutely nothing. Okay. Fair enough. Now we would have the condition else if a of mid is equals to equals to one. So this is nothing, but we would make mid plus plus. Okay. Now the only condition remaining is when mid is equals to equals to two. Okay. At this position, what we need to do is we need to do swap of a of mid and then a of high minus minus. Okay. So we don't need to return anything. Let us just compile and run and see. Okay. We are getting correct output for the sample test cases. So if you are here till this point of the solution, then trust me, you made it a lot by still practicing in this fetish season. Happy Durga Puja and happy Dashera to everyone. So if you like the video, feel free to like and comment so that the reach of this video could be increased. Thank you everyone.